might challenge you one step further. Connor, feel free to step in whenever you want. Um, okay, so um, so we're looking at we're looking at massing, and obviously you, you like to train differently. Everything's about when you when you're talking about progressive overload, you're obviously talking strictly weights, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now with 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 cutting. Again, I know this. To- I know we're talking about um, massing specifically, mm-hmm. but um, I'm actually like um, I'm curious to know that what your thoughts are when you look at it from this perspective. So, you're talking about when you're cutting and leaning out. You know, you're talking about all these different recovery adaptations that we that we need while um, while training, right? Like mm-hmm. well, from from training. Okay. Remember a couple of podcasts ago, we spoke about SRA curves. Right, mm-hmm. so stimulus recovery adapt, um, adaptations. Right, if you're not causing any kind of stimulus, shall I say, what are you then recovering from? Are we just talking about everyday life? I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just getting, I'm just curious to know. So, if, if, if training, then while well, you're cutting, it's like, okay, all right, like if it's going to be somewhat drastically different from bulking. Like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to really add volume to my, my, my work or, you know, like, or maybe let's just, let's just talk, you know, I'm, I'm training for a particular stimulus. If I'm not hitting that stimulus, what am I then recovering? Mm-hmm. Right? See, if you're the, kind of just taking a back pedal. This, this one, uh, uh, you, you got a very nice point. Like if you're not really activating or you're not really giving stimulus to the bo- uh, body part you're training, then how are you even recovering? That's a very nice question. It's not how uh, are you recovering, it's what are you then recovering? What are you then recovering? Yeah, sorry. If you're not damaging the muscle, then what are you recovering? Uh, let's put it that way. So, uh, now you have to realize that two things. One is uh, a, a, cutting sh- a cutting regime comes uh, after a bulking regime um, in a perfect world. I'm not talking about our world. I'm talking in a perfect world, in a person, in a perfect situation. Uh, a cutting regime will definitely come followed by uh, maybe six months of bulking, January to June, January, February, March, April, May, June. Yeah, Jan to June of uh, nice, solid, healthy bulking, followed by the June to December of cutting, or June to November of cutting, you know. So uh, if you look at it in that way, you see progressive overloading. You're doing those six months of uh, progressive overloading followed by a deload phase, progressive overloading, deload phase, probably two progressive overloading phases in that, perfect ones, and then two deload phases. And by that time, by the time, if, if you realize that, if you, if, you, if you do the calculations in your head, by the time it's July, you're already at a, at a, at a strength level uh, of moving weights which you were not at beginning of January. Did I, did I get that correct? Uh, so suppose you, so, you your max was something in January, but your max has substantially increased by July. So when you're going through a cutting phase, you're a, like if you compare that to a year prior, your ability to train has gone in up a perfect in, in a perfect world has mm-hmm. gone up, right? Yeah. But but let's just say, you know, um, we've talked about maximal recoverable volume, right? And, and, but you know, sometimes these numbers, these numbers can change, you know, what you, what may have been your MRV in one phase could mm-hmm. be potentially lower. Right. And then let's just say in this world, um, you know, cause you're, cause you're going through a cutting phase. Okay. Less energy or something like that. Maybe in, during this phase, your MRV ranges are, you know, a bit lower, but your ability to train, heavier and harder is, is a lot different um, to the year before. Mm-hmm. Now you can still in, 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 in some aspects when you can kind of comparing, okay, last year and this year, right. You can still in some regard, like make improvements, right. You can still hit new stimuluses, right. While going through this phase. Otherwise, like I said, if there's, if we're, if we're not training and hitting a stimulus, Right. If there's if there's no stimulus, it's basically mm-hmm. just wasted energy expenditure, mm-hmm. right? Which we're, we're just kind of wait, what, like wasting. Away. Like, what are we even doing? It's just like, well, if we're not going to train, well, what the fuck's the point? Like, what's if we're going to just focus on recovery, right? Because we're eating less and we're just training for the sake of training, just to get a good pump. But what's you know, you you you're kind of coming like some, not just you. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that probably just come from the angle. Well, what's 
you know, like if I'm not going to train to make any kind of stimulus, I may as well just not, not, not train at all. Just fuck it. Like let's just eat and diet till the show. True. Kind of thing. Right. Um, yeah. So, so do you think, do you, okay. So that's going from a cutting, you know, cutting perspective. So um, now, although these, these um, variables might be different. Like when I say MRV and maybe when you're going through, you know, in a perfect world, um, going through a massing phase, your MRV, okay. is a lot higher. I've got more energy. I can, you know, just all, all everything's going up. Right. Should it be different? Hmm. Is this in Connor, a perfect- feel free to jump in. Yeah. Connor. Yeah. I'll jump in. So do me a tackle off season or free contest. I've been, <laughs> Off season, a pre contest phase followed by off season. You know, I'll, maybe I'll just summarize this quickly. Um, I think we're going to understand the principle is always the same, but the circumstances are changing. So you still got your different stimulus thresholds and you've got different ones to um, grow and you've got different ones to maintain, which might be something you'd look into as part of the question of why should we train at all when we're pre contest. So I'm going to talk about bulking and then you can almost guess that everything that doesn't apply bulking is almost inversely related because there's different circumstances related to food. Okay. The opposite if you're in deficit. Um, so when you're trying to grow, you're in an interesting circumstance because there's more anabolic machinery, if you will, um, being catered towards growing via things outside of training. Like imagine you need multiple things to come to the party to grow. You need like mm-hmm. training, you need like you know, recovery, sleep kind of thing, but you need food. Imagine to a degree, if you keep two out of three of those high, you'll have a good response. Well, if you look at pre-contest, you know, if you're training good, but there's no food there and you're sleeping poor, you you haven't met that two out of three, you're going to struggle. So without the food, you need to be really precise with your training because you need to hit that two out of three. Off season, you kind of got more room because recovery on the whole is better, you know, granted, you know, a few things. Um, and food is obviously higher that helps recovery in itself and just straight up anabolic um, pathways. So with training, you can almost get away with less to a degree. Like the growth threshold is lower. The maintenance threshold is definitely lower. <laughs> um, but you can also train more as well. So almost like the gap and range of how you can train is more. Am I saying that's, you know, men you should be, you know, Oh, whatever. I'm so I've got a really wide bullseye. Should I be throwing with my eyes closed? No, because if you do, one of the advantages advantages is of off season is imagine you can progress through a wider range. Well, mm-hmm. it means exactly that you can progress for a longer period of time. Just because you can throw a bullseye, you know, anywhere in the range and work for a little bit to maximally not get the best results, you know, month one, month two, but also month three, four, five, six you'd have ways of progressing. And now there's a higher and better progression model that you can take advantage of. So the model's the same, but the range is bigger. So I think Mm. that's one of the big things off season. It like, yeah, frees up choice, but you know, I think most people are all about like maximum adaptations. It allows you to make potentially, if you get things really right, maximum adaptations for longer. And I think the for longer part is key, you know, before you're like limited by all these other things. That's that's nicely placed. That's nicely placed. Uh, the 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 answer that I, I think Nick was looking, Nick, you are looking for, um, from my training perspective, I would like to say uh, that 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 concept of six months of gaining and then six months of leaning out. I wanted to say that those six months of gains, when you were gaining and when you're hitting that P, the PPR every day. Uh, the, the the weight that you started with in January has substantially increased by the time you reach July, and it keeps increasing. Uh, so that riding that bicycle downhill uh, is is actually a valid example, uh, because by the time you're you're cutting down, you already have so much strength on the wings uh, from all the bulking that you've done that it's literally easy to lift uh, lift the weight that you already used to and then progress a little bit further. So even when you're cutting, you're actually progressing. Now, this is what I'm talking about when you're perfectly doing everything good, when you're professionally doing it. Professionally doing it, uh, I mean, you're doing it, you're biting it down to the bone and you're, uh, you have done all your bulking phases correctly. 
uh, every week of progressive overloading has been utilized and you've gone up in weight. Uh, that's what I mean by uh, perfecting. Somebody has background noises. <laughs> Because I think at the at the end of the day, the goal the goal of any kind of cut phase, it's not just to lose body fat. It's also to maintain as much as the shit that you just slapped onto your body, all right? And you know, to do that obviously requires you know a degree of you know that those degrees of you know adaptations to be made, mm-hmm. right? So now when now when I do say that, like like. It doesn't just mean when we talk about any kind of form of progressive overload or, you know, reaching new stimulus or anything like that. It doesn't mean fucking going like 300%, you know, you know, just fucking dying after, you know, huh. the end of every sessions and shit like that. It doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't mean that, yeah. right. It's, it's, you know, like, I think, you know, I, I get what you're, you're coming from in the sense of, okay, you know, while I'm cutting, obviously I'm in less calories. There's really only so much weight I can add to the bar, to the dumbbells and things like that before things start to slow down. Mm. Right. But that's where, you know, you got to, obviously when you have a good trainer, you know, they, they start to look at, you know, other variables that can actually help, you know, increase, you know, again, your ability to train, you know, more efficiently harder you know and again hit those stimuluses and reach those adaptations that we want so um like yeah so no that, that was that was I, um, I was just i was just intrigued you know you know your thoughts and just comparisons on the two um thank you for watching the forge podcast if you enjoyed it we'd love for you to subscribe if you want to find out more about us check the description and as always 